2 Peter uh, chapter 1, verse 5 and 6. And besides this, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue, and to virtue knowledge, and to knowledge temperance, and to temperance patience, and to patience godliness. We've been studying Peter's call, which is God's call, uh, through Peter, uh, to spiritual growth. Uh, we've been looking at this passage and the call to the Christian to be fruit-bearing Christians. That's what we want to be. We want to bear fruit. We want to glorify Christ. And we, this morning, with the help of the Lord, will focus on adding patience. We looked at uh, beginning, we begin with faith, salvation. Uh, add to your faith virtue. So we start with faith. We start with the genuine experience of uh, salvation. Before we have these things, we have to have an, uh, an experience of being saved by grace through faith. So add to your faith virtue and to virtue knowledge and to knowledge temperance. And today we're adding to temperance or to self-control patience. Well, what comes to your mind when we think of patience? I suppose if you look up the word in a dictionary, you might find something like the capacity to accept or tolerate delay, patience, uh, the capacity to accept or tolerate de delay, trouble, or suffering without getting angry or upset or without giving up, patience. But um, as we look at this lesson this morning, Patience in the scripture it goes f much farther than that. Patience, in a general sense, in scripture, uh, is hopeful waiting, cheerful endurance. Hopeful waiting. We're waiting with hope. That's patience. Cheerful endurance is another way of uh, thinking of patience. Or perseverance. Patience al also means long-suffering. Or lack of complaint. Patience. Patience is also perseverance. So in the context of patience being perseverance, it's the characteristic of a person who is not swerved. We're looking and thinking of this, what the scripture in summary of this word patience. Someone that has patience is not swerved from his deliberate purpose or her deliberate, deliberate purpose and his loyalty to faith and holiness, not even by the greatest trials and sufferings. So we remember that Peter's writing these letters to the Christians that are scattered. They, they're endure, enduring intense persecution. They're undergoing great suffering. And he's encouraging them to hold on, to have patience, so patience is not just waiting. Patience is hopeful endurance. It's perseverance. We're holding on to something. Patience is steadfastness. Holding on and not allowing any trial to deter us from our faith in Christ. So when we think of trials, we think of trials in two forms. Circumstances and People, trials, circumstances can be trials, but people can also be trials. Yes? All right. So now, uh, there's two, as uh, one to uh, peel the onion a little bit, and we'll go to the next slide. And um, in the New Testament, there are two Greek words that are translated to our English word patient. So just the first one, thank you. So the first one is hupomene, and is a Greek word. It's translated as patience. So when we read in the King James Version, uh, oftentimes uh, we, we'll see the word patience. Well, one of the Greek words, this hupomene, is steadfastness or hopeful waiting or cheerful endurance under trial. Staying power, that's patience. Staying power, hold on. 
have power to stay, stay still, to endure. Um, it's uh, persistence or perseverance, holding steady and not going under. That's hupomene. So hupomene is often used in scripture in the New Testament. Uh, it's an attitude of the heart towards circumstances. So patience in things or circumstances. That's the first word. Second word. Macrothumia. Macrothumia is long-suffering or forbearance. Patience with people. Bearing with those, notice this, bearing with those whose attitudes or behavior are in conflict with that which we think is right or proper. We'll leave those definitions on there for a while, these two words. So when we talk of patience this morning, as Peter exhorts us to add to temperance, add to t self control, patience, we're thinking of endurance or steadfastness, and we're also thinking of long suffering. So here's a few examples. First word, hupomene, in scripture, he, uh, we see Hebrews 10.36 is a, an example. For ye have, have need of patience, hupomene. You have need of cheerful endurance, that after ye have done the will of God, ye might receive the promise. You've done the will of God, but you need patience, hopeful endurance, cheerful endurance. Hang on, you need patience after you've done the will of God. Then another, for the same word, hupomene, Luke 21, 19 says, In your patience possess ye your souls. Or in your patience, in your steadfastness, possess or gain ye your soul. You will win your soul. Speaking to those that have already been saved, if, you, if you're steadfast, if you persevere. Another word, another scripture for hupomene, for the first uh, Greek word we're, uh, we're considering is Romans 5, 3, and 4. We see, but we glory in tribulations also knowing that tribulation worketh patience. So tribulations, trials. We're going to touch on trials or tribulations. Peter's talking to people that are going on, uh, uh, undergoing a lot of tribulations, a lot of suffering. And Paul says here in Romans, but we glory in tribulation. We, he's saying we celebrate, we rejoice in tribulations, knowing why do we celebrate tribulations, according to Paul. Why? Because tribulation worketh patience. Trials produce hupomene, or patience, cheerful endurance. Trials teach us. Trials uh, teach us how to endure. They're no fun. I don't know if I would think of saying we celebrate trials, but when we think of suffering, the spiritual eyes, through the spiritual eyes, we, we recognize God has allowed the suffering or this trial to develop hupomene in our lives. So the example of a couple of scriptures here of macrothumia, which is forbearance or long-suffering, slowness in avenging wrongs. That's macrothumia. Slowness to avenge wrongs. They wronged you, and they sure need a piece of my mind. But patience, macrothumia, is slow to avenge. Make sense? You remember of the servant uh, that forgave, that the master forgave him 10,000 talents. He would have never been able to, forgive, uh, to pay, repay that debt. That represents our heavenly father forgiving us through Jesus our sins. We could never repay our debt. So that same servant finds his fellow servant uh, and who owes him about, I believe it's 100 pence, which is about four months wages. Not, I think it's I looked it up before, but it's, um, it would take 
126,000 years to repay that 10,000 talents at an average wage or something ridiculous like that. So, so the 10,000 talents that the king forgave would never be able to be repaid, but the king forgives the servant. The same servant see, sees his fellow man, fellow servant, owes him four months w- worth of wages, which is a good amount of debt. And here's the response from his fellow servant. Uh, Matthew 18, 29, and his fellow servant fell down at his feet and besought him, saying, have patience with me and I will pay thee all. He didn't say forgive me. He just said, have macrothumia, have long suffering, be, sl- be slow to avenge, uh, be slow to take vengeance, give me some time. That's all his, uh, his fellow servant asked. So Jesus is using this uh, illustration to remind us that if we don't forgive our fellow man either, will our Heavenly Father forgive us. Another example of macrothumia is 1 Thessalonians 5.14, which says, Be patient toward all men. Have long-suffering towards everyone. Not only to those that are important. Not only to those that we love, like our own family members but maybe to those that are harder to, be long, uh, to extend long-suffering. But sometimes our own family can be a difficult thing to uh, endure, uh, to have long-suffering through. But here it says, be patient or have macrothumia, be long-suffering. Another one, Galatians 5.22, the fruit of the Spirit is, one of the fruit of the Spirit is patience, macrothumia. Long suffering. First Corinthians thirteen four says, "Charity suffereth long. Suffereth long is macrothumia. Charity is expressed, or charity love expresses itself with patience, with long suffering toward people. You know, it's easy to love God." Is it easy to love people? Of course, with the grace of God and with our cooperation. Charity suffereth long. Love is not impatient, in other words. Love is not short or sharp with people. So when Peter is saying add patience to our lives, we want to add uh, 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 long suffering or Extend long-suffering. In our scripture reading in James 5, 7 through 11, we won't reread it now, but I'll, you could read it again if you will later. But um, in those verses, five, uh, uh, chapter 5, 7 through 11, we see that James uses, James uses both of these words. So be patient, uh, speaking of endurance or steadfastness, but also he speaks of long-suffering. So in verse 7 and 8, he speaks of patience in waiting for the second coming of Christ. We know Christ is going to return soon. But in the meantime, James says, be patient. Have cheerful endurance. So be patient in waiting for the second coming of Christ. In verse 9, he speaks of patience with one another. When he says, grudge not one against another. In verse 10, he speaks of patience in suffering affliction. And enduring or holding, holding on during suffering, during hurtful times. And he says, remember, the, follow the prophet's example. And then in verse 11 of James 5, he speaks of patience and waiting for deliverance from trials like Job did. Job held on. Job didn't let, uh, curse God and die, even though it was tempting. Uh, well, he was tempted uh, by his close friends. Loved one, wife, to curse God and die. Give up, but no patience held on. Uh, Job held in patience. He held on. So back to our text, add to uh, temperance or to self-control, patience. Extend patience, in other words. Or be patient with people and practice patience during trials is what Peter is saying. God values patience. As Christians... Who love God. Of course we do. We're, we're, we've been saved. We, we've experienced regeneration. As Christians who love God and want to be more like Christ, we certainly want to add patience to our faith, to 
our knowledge and temperance as we've considered. And while, while as in, in, in quick reminder, while all these characteristics, these graces that Peter is talking about are part of the fruit of the Spirit or, or grace gifts of God uh, that we receive, we receive a dose of all these at salvation. Peter also says, add these things. So add patience. So what that means is develop or nurture or activate or use patience. Another word I would use when, when Peter says at patience, we could think of accept suffering. Accept the trial. That's at patience. Um, as we look at, we've been, been looking at this text in Second Peter, we see that there's a progression to these characteristics. While we do get a dose of all of these at salvation, uh, there's a progression. These individual char characteristics serve as building blocks on one another uh, for spiritual development. We start with faith, and we add virtue and moral excellence. We add knowledge, and then temperance. Uh, last week, we touched on the fact that as we gain knowledge of God, as we learn what God expects of us, as we learn more of God's Christ's character, who he is, as we learn more, we gain knowledge. We add knowledge of what God expects of us. And, and, and the calling to holiness, to righteousness, to godliness. As we gain knowledge, then we add temperance. Temperance is self-control, self-discipline. And then to self-discipline or self-control, we add patience. It's like a building block. Because it t certainly takes self-control to extend patience, doesn't it? Yes? Self-control, patience. You have to control yourself to add patience. So as, as, as I've been thinking about this, there's an aspect of these characteristics that, that is actually natural. A level of this is just natural, meaning it's not, just, not spiritual. In other words, even the unsaved practice or can practice some level of, of self-control or self-discipline as in sports or going on a diet, even patience, there's a level of this that is natural. Even adding knowledge, there's an aspect of this that we could add knowledge and, and gain information but not know Christ. So there's a level of this that, that is uh, natural, but there's an element of this that is spiritual, that is a grace of God. And in the natural, we do all we can. I've been thinking we have, you remember, you all with me still? Amen. Amen. Um, Thinking of Legia and Richard, those of you who remember my sister, she, they lived here for a couple of years. Uh, in, in the near future, they asked if we would dedicate their baby in Sacramento when we're visiting. So I was thinking of parenting. And there's an aspect of discipline or self-control and, and patience uh, and adding knowledge that is natural. And, and, in fact, parents do their children disservice thinking of this. If they, if they don't te teach their young children self-control, isn't that true? Or patience. Be patient. Wait your turn in line. Uh, uh, there, there's an aspect of this that is natural. Um, it's not common for parents to teach their children to suffer wrong. But again, when we're thinking of self-control or temperance, which was last week, we le live in such a self-indulgent, self-serving Impatient society, opposite of patience, opposite of these two words, endurance and long-suffering. So, and, and knowledge, uh, there, uh, this world is, is not promoting godly knowledge. So there's an aspect of, of our natural and as parents, we want to do all we can in the natural to equip them with these traits, but there's a divine aspect that only takes place after they're born again. We want to equip them to get to the point that they will choose Christ, and then they're, along, they're further along in their Christian walk by learning, by having these disciplines. You know, on the other hand, when people, you know, the, the, our society says, don't, don't stick with it. You don't have to take this. It's very self-focused, very impatient, but the graces of God enable us to have patience, to stick with it. 
We don't like as parents to see our children suffer. But sometimes, remember the Father, our Heavenly Father, Scripture tells us, whom the Father loveth, he chasteneth. He applies some temporary suffering to develop us. And that's where we're going with this. What is the significance of uh, patience? Why is patience vital to a Christian? Because the Christian race is more like a marathon than the sprint. In Hebrews 12.1, we, we read, Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which does so easily beset us, and let us run with patience, with cheerful endurance. Let us run with patience the race that is set before us. So why is patience vital? Because we need patience. We, we read, For ye have need of patience after ye have done the will of God that you might receive the promise. There's a promise of eternal life. There's a promise that Christ will return. But, but we must be patient. Wait on his timing. It's not enough to start this beautiful race. We want to finish, to endure till the end. So Christians that want to mature, as Peter calls us to mature, we add to our faith knowledge and to knowledge temperance and to temperance Patience, because uh, patience is critical, necessary to obtain the victory. Why is patience important? Patience is one of Christ's characteristics. Long-suffering is one of Christ's char characteristics. If we want to resemble, reflect the image of Christ, in fact, in Colossians 3.12, Paul says, put on therefore, or adorn, or be clothed with, with and he says, put on, therefore, as the elect of God, as Christians, holy and beloved, bowels of mercies or hearts of mercy, hearts of compassion. So put on, adorn yourself with bowels of mercies, kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness, and then long-suffering, which is macrothumia. So put it on is what Paul says. Be clothed with it. Why is patience critical to the Christian? Because patience is vital to spiritual growth. Impatience or restlessness, unwilling and, uh, to yield fully to the will of God will hinder God's work in our lives. Sometimes it's tempting for all of us to hit the escape button. You know what I'm talking about on a computer? When things don't work, it, the computer is timing out. Uh, you hit a command and it's not responding. Hit the escape button. Get out of here. It's tempting in our lives. This is too, too hard. Escape. But patience hold on, holds on. Patience allows God to, to accomplish his work of grace in our lives. I, I read someplace, and, and I think it's true. It may take God a long time to do something in our lives, what he actually wishes for, to do quickly. Why? Because we're not cooperating. Because we're not enduring. We're not waiting. We're not enduring with, with uh, cheerfulness, with hopefulness. And God. Patience seems to develop best under hard trials, we see in Peter and in James and in, in Paul's writings. James 1 3 and 4 says, Knowing this, that the trying of your faith, trying or testing of your faith, knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. But let patience have her perfect word, work that you may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. So let patience have its perfect work that you could be an uh, entire or a mature Christian, wanting nothing or lacking nothing regarding anything that a mature Christian should possess. Peter says, at patience. Paul says, put on patience. James says, let patience have her perfect work. It's the same idea. He's, he's saying, let, it, let patience be fairly developed or allow it to produce the appropriate effects in your life without being hindered. Let patience have its perfect work. Let it not be obstructed in its influence on your soul. Let patience have its perfect work. God is trying, the trial you're going through, James says, is working on you. It's producing endurance. It doesn't feel good. Because trials uh, uh, usually by fire, 
uh, are not comfortable, that refining process, but let patience have its perfect work. That's how we add patience. That's the message of Peter this morning. Um, in our scripture reading, we, verse, we read verse 8 and 9 of James 5, and he says, Be ye also patient, establish your hearts for the coming of the Lord draweth nigh. And I thought, when I read that, I thought, oh, that must be hupumane, the, the first word. So I thought James is saying, be also patient, meaning have hopeful endurance. But he's not using that word, he's using the second, meaning be long-suffering with one another. So he says, be also long-suffering with people, in other words. Establish your hearts, for the coming of the Lord draweth nigh. And we see it very clear in verse 9. Grudge not one against another, brethren, lest he be condemned, because the judge standeth before the door. So why is patience important or long-suffering? Because, well, there's judgment if we don't extend patience to one another that God extends to us. God is patient with us. Amen? Why we want to extend the love, uh, same love of God. Uh, Peter says in first letter, chapter 2, verse 20, to add patience during persecution or unfair treatment. Has, have you ever been treated unfairly? How does that feel? Peter says, for what glory is it when you be buffeted or beaten or pounded or punished? For your faults, you shall take it patiently. He says, well, what glory is it if you had it coming? <laughs> what do you expect? There's what you sow, you will reap. You're harsh, you sowed uh, hurt, and now you, sent, uh, you sowed uh, anger, and you got anger back. What, what glory is it if you take it patiently? But then he says, on the other hand, but, but if he do well and suffer for it, you take it patiently. You endure it patiently. You suffer it for the name of Christ. This is acceptable with God. So add patience, long-suffering with others when they don't deserve it, just like the servant that was forgiven 10,000 uh, talents. Another point as we wind down, the trial of our faith is very valuable. Peter says that the trial of our faith is more precious than gold that perisheth, though it be tried with fire. Yeah. Speaking of that refining fire, the song sung, sometimes it takes a mountain to get a hold of me. Sometimes it takes a trial to teach me. We don't like the, the, the valley or the mountain that, that brings us to our knees. But those trials... If, uh, our faith will be tried by fire, tribulations, suffering, pain. can come in all kinds of suffering forms, medical bills, accidents, betrayal, mistreatment, persecution, loss of a loved one, marriage difficulties, trials, uh, trials of circumstances, trials with people. Yet, Peter says that the trial of our faith being much more precious than of gold that perished, though it be tried with uh, um, uh, fire, might be found unto praise and honor and glory unto the appearing of Jesus Christ. First there's the suffering, then there's the glory at Christ's appearing. A test reveals in school the knowledge of the student, right? Uh, a test reveals what you know. It, it just tell, if you... If you do well, you know, it reflects what you, your knowledge was. A test in the Christian's life reveals its integrity. A test in the Christian's life will, re, uh, will reveal patience or endurance. It's in a test of trial when our, our hupomone, our, our uh, cheerful endurance shines it's also in a test of trial where our macrothumia shines, when our long suffering, when somebody squeezes us, pushes us in a corner, when they mistreat us, when they hurt us, and we respond with patience, we add patience, and we show the love of God and the long suffering of God. That shines. That's acceptable unto God. So we think about that. 
this morning, how do we respond during our trials? And our prayer is to do as we're exhorted by Peter, add patience, meaning activate it or use it or accept the suffering, endure it, let God work as he is trying to work in our lives. Nothing happens in your life and mine accidentally. If, we're, if we've given our hearts to the Lord, the steps of a good man are order of the Lord. Nothing happened to Job accidentally. Yes, people have a choice, but God allows it. The devil meant it for evil. Just like with Joseph, his brothers and the enemy meant it for evil. There are people with evil motives, true. But if God allows it, Joseph said, and if we could see this like Joseph, you meant it for evil, but God meant it for good. So I'm going to add patience to my life. Yes, there's suffering. I wish it wasn't here. I wish it would be gone. But I'm going to add patience, which is long-suffering. I'm going to show uh, a cheerful endurance. I'm going to smile on the storm because Jesus is with me. I'm going to show long-suffering because I want Christ to shine. I want him to get the glory through my suffering. Not for my glory. Not to show, look, I'm better than you. I'm taking it like the Christian. <laughs> you just got your blessing <laughs> or your reward. But if we add patience, we accept the suffering that God's appointed. Allow God to do his perfect work to shine through us. Allow God to, to accomplish his refining process in us. Because we cannot rush God. We like to sometimes. Take this out. We like to hit the escape button. I know the feeling. But Jesus says, endure it till the end. He that endureth till the end shall be saved. So we're in a spiritual race, but, but patience endures till the end. Hang on. Others are watching your life. You give up. You give up. You throw away your patience, your hopeful endurance. They will say, why should I even consider it Christianity? Hang on to Jesus. Hang on to that promise of eternal life. What a privilege this morning to be here to seek the Lord. We'll sing 685, have a time to pray.